Mountain pine beetles swarm on a hot summer day, attacking large, healthy pine trees, boring through the bark and laying eggs which will grow into a beetle colony. Heavily colonized trees die within a few weeks, but from the air, there is no sign of death until late the following spring, when normal green is displaced by a light yellow foliage. This usually darkens into red by July or August. The newly discolored trees, all dead, are nests of young mountain pine beetles, ready to swarm and attack living trees around them. To protect our northern pine forests, the Prince Rupert Forest District undertook a three-year program to control expanding beetle populations and to evaluate various forest management choices, both for sanitation harvesting of heavily infested areas and strategic logging in areas designated for control. Pine trees have two major natural enemies, fire and the tiny mountain pine beetle. Controlling the beetles is like fighting fires. If you catch them quickly, they can be contained. If you let them get a good hold, they'll wipe out the pine forest. Recent outbreaks are part of an epidemic in which pine beetle populations have expanded rapidly. The beetles are naturally endemic to pine forests. That is, ordinarily present in small numbers, but a large enough nuisance to consume perhaps 3% of the annual cut each year. The trees defend themselves by secreting pitch to plug up beetle boreholes. Normally, only mature trees more than 80 years old are attacked. Trees in their peak growth years with a thick phloem layer forming large volumes of new wood each year protected by thick bark. These are precisely the conditions both to protect beetle eggs and larvae from cold temperatures and to provide optimum food supply for newly developing beetles. The life cycle is highly specialized. Young larval beetles, which develop from fertilized eggs in three weeks, lie in the pine tree's phloem layer, which is converted by the blue stain fungus into food for the young adult stage. It is these fungi which actually dry up the sapwood and kill the tree. The pupa evolves through the young adult stage to become a mature beetle. The dominant factor in pine beetle cycles is the weather. Cold winters kill beetles, mild winters favor survival. Cold, wet summers hinder migration. Hot summers encourage beetles to swarm. The female beetles fly first, attacking trees until they manage to bore through the bark into the phloem and the sap layer. Pine resin combines with female attractants, producing a signal which attracts the males and other females to colonize the tree. Blue stain fungus spores are carried into the tree on the bodies of the beetles. After fertilization, females bore their way up the phloem layer, depositing between 60 and 80 eggs along the side of the egg gallery. Bore dust drops down, sealing the bottom of the gallery. Within three weeks, the eggs hatch into larvae, which bore horizontally around the tree. Large areas of northern British Columbia were extensively burned over between 90 and 120 years ago, and the replacement forest growth, chiefly lodgepole pine, has all matured at the same time, presenting a ripe target for an expanding beetle population. However, previous tree harvest calculations did not include epidemic insect losses. Recent scientific studies by the Pacific Forest Research Center have led to a better grasp of the complex interaction between pine tree and pine beetle. Research officers also maintain a close watch, advising the British Columbia Forest Service when and where beetle epidemics are likely. 
Forest Service Protection Staff also work closely with fish and wildlife officers, whose special knowledge of grazing requirements, animal rearing grounds, stream bank protection and spawning areas often modifies routine cutting patterns. Beetles usually colonize the nearest live mature tree, but some have been measured in flights 12 miles from their host. Preliminary data is gathered in the late spring, when foliage discoloration first becomes visible from the air. Using this information, Forest Service Protection Staff prepares plans for ground surveys. Data plotted on the aerial photographs is transferred onto forest cover maps. So infected areas are marked with probe lines to be inspected after the beetles have swarmed. It's the living colonies we have to catch and suppress. As soon as the swarm has taken place, Forestry staff does a careful and complete check along the predetermined probe lines to identify newly infected trees. Two signs indicate recent beetle entry, boring dust or frass and pitch tubes. Removed by wind or rain, frass can only be found shortly after the beetles have swarmed. Trees can withstand normal attacks for several years, and the pitched out beetles will die. But a mass attack of epidemic beetle population will kill the tree in one year. The marked trees from the probe lines are plotted onto forest cover maps. Decisions must be made quickly on the best choices for harvesting and for control of the epidemic. Comparing with last year's maps, we can see the drift of beetle infestation. Strategy here is to plan early harvesting. There is a slight buildup in this section. Access is available, so it is possible by using small clear cuts and selective logging to remove most or all of the infected trees. Total control is the objective here. Several small isolated pockets of infested trees must be felled and burned on the site. The beetles have a head start on us in this section, but access is not available. To recover control, we'll have to cut massively, which means we'll have to build 12 miles of new road by next year. Cutting schedules are usually based on a five-year plan but pine beetles won't wait five years. Epidemic swarms multiply between two and seven times in a single year. So we either stamp out the infestation right away or within several years risk losing the entire commercial stand and younger trees as well. If we don't take the wood, the beetles will get it. This means emergency cutting. Long-term plans must be changed. Men and machinery must be diverted from scheduled harvesting. And the whole operation must be done on very short notice. There is also additional pressure from the unfamiliar patterns required by selective cutting to ecological standards. Taking out all the infected trees includes trees which are smaller than commercial size, and that makes problems in handling and processing. Blue stain is usually, but not always, visible in logs from beetle-killed trees. Blue stain fungus can reduce the grade of the lumber following processing. Affected trees also suffer from excessive checking and splitting if left standing for more than two years after attack. The harvesting of pine forests to control beetle infestations can place a burden on the timber resources of the area. 
but it also places a burden on the loggers because the additional cut volume was not expected and not included in cutting plans. This can mean awkward problems for transport facilities as well as storage and processing. Pine beetles attack only living trees. However, it is possible when a tree has been colonized that the colony will survive even after the tree has been harvested and transported as logs. The new beetles may even swarm under the right conditions. For this reason, such logs should not be transported nor stored near uninfested pine forests. All these insects will be destroyed by debarking the logs and burning the bark. A number of working tests were made on a variety of portable log handling and processing machines during the three-year control program. This debarker unit performed very well. The beetles were killed during debarking while the logs were made safe for transport to lumber mills. Tests were also carried out on the feasibility of converting logs too small for lumber into commercial wood chips. This portable chipper unit located at trackside proved to be very practical. Other logs were put through a tie mill. Beetle killed trees are very suitable for railway ties because blue stain fungus appears to assist the penetration of creosote preservative into the wood. Once again, slabs from the outside of the logs must be destroyed by burning. Lumber and commercial wood products can be recovered from beetle-killed forest growth, provided we log it quickly. And logging quickly is essential to control beetle infestation. With the understanding and cooperation of the logging companies, it proved feasible to establish special harvesting patterns and to deploy men and machines effectively on an emergency basis. There is seldom more than two months time after infested trees are located for sanitary harvesting to be completed. In northern districts, the work has to be finished before the arrival of major winter snows and very low temperatures because there will not be time after spring breakup to complete the cut before the beetles can swarm again. The control program continues till spring, identifying and burning individual trees colonized by pine beetle, which are beyond the reach of commercial harvesting equipment or in environmentally sensitive areas. By suppressing the colonies, we eliminate next year's beetle flight. The pine beetle is a persistent enemy with a highly specialized life cycle equipped to survive nearly all weather but susceptible to fire. In an aging forest, that life cycle switches from low-level endemic to high-level epidemic infestation, putting the entire pine tree population at risk. The stakes are high. In lumbering areas, that has to mean community involvement. The balance between forest growth and wildlife is critical. Fish and wildlife habitat, forest regeneration, and watershed and recreational requirements must be considered. Using sanitary harvesting methods, it has proven possible even to improve wildlife habitat. Land can actually be improved for browsing and grazing during emergency cutting. Close cooperation with fish and wildlife people secured logging methods which harmonized with critical environmental requirements. For the future, one lesson is to make sure we have pine stands of different ages in our forests, so that as these trees mature, we can harvest them before the beetles get them and prevent probable epidemics as well. But the chief result is the knowledge that by treating beetle infestation as we do a fire, responding quickly to the outbreak, diverting logging schedules where necessary, and harvesting and clearing areas under attack, we can contain and control pine beetle infestations. <laughs>